Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. And from that familiar, wonderful Easter hymn, Now the green blade riseth from the buried grain. Love is come again like wheat that springeth green. Easter morning, like Christmas Eve, strains those of us who are called to explain or describe and approach as preachers the great mystery of God's life loving, life restoring, and world changing actions in Jesus Christ. How do we put into words, how to package, make more understandable what God is up to with us in Jesus? When I applied to college in another age, the application had this question. What would you say to suspected civilizations in outer space to describe the nature of life on Earth? Or actually, of human nature on Earth? It was a very intimidating question. It remains to be intimidating, but obviously it has stuck with me. And to make it even more challenging, they gave us only one small inch on the paper to respond. This was in the time before computers and videos and world processing program, word processing programs. We had typewriters, eraser tape, something this goop called whiteout. And by the time I was done trying to compose my meager response, by the time I was done erasing and whiting out my responses and typing over it, there was hardly a fiber of paper left on the page. So being asked to move into this space reminds me on Easter, reminds me of that daunting experience. What would you say about the meaning of the resurrection of Jesus Christ now in this year? What could you say to add to what we've already heard on Easter morning? What more can we say beyond Alleluia, Christ is risen, the Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia. Maybe that's all I need to say. But there is something in us that still wants to respond to a question, well, so what? What does it mean? How can I make sense? How can I digest this colossal truth? How does it help you and me move about in this world, this world that is suffering from such trauma, from war, from pandemic, from hatred and division, systemic oppression and racism and inequity, relentless and ever new forms of violence of body, mind, and community? How can this quiet encounter in a garden between Mary Magdalene, a discredited witness at best, and Jesus of Nazareth, a tortured, crucified, dead human being now alive, how does that encounter make a difference in how you and I see and live in this world today? That's the question. And by the way, preacher, you have about 10 minutes, 12 at most, and you've already used up about three of them talking about your college application. So I offer one word. One word, I think, that kind of encapsulates the whole Christian, mis uh, the whole Christian mystery from Christmas to Easter to Pentecost to the Ascension. Here's the word, nevertheless. Though the world was oppressed by the powerful and the mighty and the rich, nevertheless, God chose to enter the world not in the halls of power or privilege or prestige, 
but through an unknown, meek, and unmarried young woman from a negligible town out in the hills. Though humankind dished out its worst, the most cruel and brutal way it had to put God away and to kill Jesus, nevertheless, God returns in love, gentleness, peace, and life. Though the ground is still cold and in some places quite icy, nevertheless, crocus breaks through in tender color. Though cities are invaded and occupied, their citizens tormented and brutally slain, nevertheless, those citizens rally in courage and hope, inspiring democracy that has been itself assaulted and strained and now finds itself, we pray, renewed. Though pandemic has ravaged a society and community with isolation and anxiety, nevertheless, the dying are cared for, the sick prayed with, nevertheless, neighbors reach out in kindness, nevertheless, prayers are offered, nevertheless, meals are shared. Though the Grinch stole Christmas, nevertheless, the denizens of Whoville join hands and sing their weird, happy song. Though public swimming pools were drained and acid thrown at blacks and Latinos as they swam, nevertheless, Fred Rogers and Officer Clements rolled up their trousers and cooled their tired and hot feet together in the same simple backyard pool on national television. Though the day was gloomy and colorless, nevertheless, the bright blood red cardinal and his mate with the orange, the brilliant orange beak came to the black thistle seed. Though I continually say stupid and thoughtless things that can be sullen and thoughtless, as I said, Nevertheless, my family and friends forgive and love me anyway. Though my neighbor still has the yard signs that make me grind my teeth, that's the cause, my dear friend, dentist, Dr. Cronhart. Nevertheless, we still talk occasionally about God, church, prayer, our children, and our need to have adequate roofs over our heads. Though our church is undergoing shifts and changes as deep and dramatic as the Reformation of 500 years ago, nevertheless, people of every description still seek to worship and know and serve Jesus and to strive to make their own and real this resurrection, this rising from the dead, this triumph of hope over despair, community over isolation, this victory of love over separateness. Though humanity can be broken, fallen, callous and cruel, nevertheless, with God's death-defying and all-forgiving grace, we can start anew as from a fresh, dew-filled morning garden. Though our hearts are wintry, grieving, or in pain, nevertheless, Jesus' touch can call us back to life again. Though the fields of our hearts seem dead and bare have been, love is come, love is come again like wheat that springeth green. Nevertheless, nevertheless, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia.